Just to see you glorified. Ijile ninu ijile. Eshemo. Ijile ninu ijile. Shut up. 
To know that though the world would offer you options, you only have one option. When the Bible says, I lay before you life and death, but does not leave you to make the choice, but tells you there's life, there's death, but only one choice. And he says, choose life that you may live what God said to you in that moment. Is choose me and nothing else. Choose me and only me. Nothing added. Nothing removed. No compromises on it. That when you choose me, you will have everything that you need. God is thirsty, searching for the yielded house for the children who are willing and obedient that they may eat the good of the land he's looking for an army when I say obedient I didn't say OBI I'm serious don't confuse things he's looking for an army of children who will be obedient to his word, obedient to his ways, who will have the courage to take on the battles, knowing fully well that it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of Jehovah that will show him mercy, mercy in choosing you for the assignment, but even greater still, mercy in performing the assignment through you. What does God need? A human face. A representation. That's all he needs. He just needs a willing heart who is willing to say, use my face. Use my vehicle. Use me. Who does the work? He does the work. So where are the stewards in the house? See, every steward is chosen because the master decides, I want you to represent me here. And he chooses your place of representation. Why? He knows you. You can wear smart suit and look as dapper as pastor, but he knows you. He knows the things that only you see when you're in the closeness of your room he knows the doubts, he knows the fears he knows your weaknesses he knows your strength but if he has sent you he also knows that you have undiscovered hidden treasures inside of you why? every assignment that the Lord created you for when he made you he made you whole which means everything you will need for every assignment that you would have to perform for him. He gave it all to you on day one. You came with it. But you will not manifest some. 
until you get to the place of the assignment and the place of the need. Which is why you must have the courage to stretch. You know, people want jobs that they can fully perform on day one. Any job you can take that you're fully ready for, you've already outgrown it. Why? Because there's no space to grow in it. And God is not in the business of putting you in a place where you can't stretch. When he sent Joseph to Egypt, he was a young, confused man. The one who did not know how to hide the secrets of God as they were revealed to him in a dream. The one who did not have enough wisdom that you do not lay your jewelry on the streets. And as he received instructions from God about the future, he didn't understand the time and the seasons. And he went to hand it over to the enemies. But even in his foolishness, the purpose of God was hidden. Because if he wasn't foolish, he would not be sold into Egypt. He will not get into the prison, nor will he find himself on the throne. That is why I said, everything and anything that is assigned for your assignment is already in you. And the Lord will perfect and reveal at the right time. You know, I usually like to keep people standing. But sit. You can 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 sit. Thank you very much for welcoming me again. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for the privilege and the grace to be back in this house. Thank you very much to the father of the father of the house. Because it takes a great father to raise a great child. So if you haven't done your work well, they won't be here. So thank you. Thank you. Let's celebrate the grace in the house. You know, you must learn to celebrate the grace in the house. When it says celebrate the grace, some of you are not sure if you want to stand or you want to sit. I beg. When Pastor Kwaju said, respect and honor, but do not lay down your own call. That's what he meant. Because there's wisdom in learning how to respect and honor. When I became the chairman of First Bank, I was in my early 50s. There were people in their 70s on the board. I was the first girl and one of the youngest on the board. How was I going to cope with that in a patriarchal culture? The wisdom of God prevails in all situations. When I walk into the boardroom, even though I'm the chair, and everybody stands up because we're a very cultural institution. I have the wisdom to know that the office and the person, two different things. The person was younger and the person to which I had to relate were older. So what does that mean? I go to the older ones in the boardroom first and I kneel down. Good morning, sir. To some, why? I should carry shoulder for what? It didn't diminish my power or the power of my office. So I greet to respect and honor as a well brought up Yoruba girl. Then I sit at the head of the table. But in sitting at that head of the table, the whole power of my office was still constituted in it. But I also have a mandate to ensure that the work can be done. And it's not a one-man job. It's a team job. So I would still look at the elderly ones and say, Sir, can you please take care of this for me? And they will willingly do it. It's not. The journey of one doesn't take from the journey of the other. But the order of God always remains. So when the Bible says, honor your father and your mother, sometimes your parents will not understand where you're going, what you want to do. But... It doesn't change that they're your parents. And therefore, the honor commanded by God is not negotiable. It was not conditional on their having an understanding of your ways or not. It was theirs as a gift. So when I say honor the man of the house, you honor but you stand. You honor but you do not lay down your assignment. Jesus encountered 
all the priests and the Sadducees and everybody that was older than him. Don't forget he died at 33. He was not afraid to challenge, to confront. But you never heard that he went to one elderly man and slapped him. Please be seated. Sorry, I like to teach with everything. It's how we must move across generations to share little things that we've learned in our journey. You know, I kept seeing this, your legislation everywhere and wondering what are we legislating on? Are we setting up our own national assembly? And we're going to create our own laws. I heard someone say yes. When we live within a land, the Bible commands us to respect the laws of the land. So we will. But you know, we still can rule and control the affairs by our actions, by our voices, by our positioning. We're influencers of the land, wherever the land is. But it's about how we position ourselves, control ourselves, and act. My topic that I was assigned, stewarding your assignments very long. Stewarding your assignments or purpose audaciously as a believer from a place of intimacy with God. So I broke it down to three words. In that whole long sentence, there are only three key words. Stewardship, audacity, and intimacy with God. Those are the three things that you need to focus on for this session. And I trust the Lord that you will learn one or two things that will take you to the next stage. Who is a steward? An assigned caretaker. An assigned caretaker of resources for the owner. So who owns everything you will ever have to represent? Jehovah. But can God come down by himself? No. You are his privileged ambassadors for every space where you are. The question is, do you understand the implications of the assignment? Because if you don't, you'll mess one spot up. And every spot is linked to the other spots. So when you mess one spot up, you not only mess up your own spot, you mess up for all the people. You can see, we only canceled subsidy for fuel. How many countries are crying? Think about it. It shows you the impact and the influence. Because as Nigeria was suffering to dig a hole, paying the subsidy, there were many nations that were the benefactors of the subsidy. That's why the fuel was moving out. In shutting it down, there will be a lot of pain in the region. Even though we ourselves will suffer in many ways, but we can walk through this for the overall betterment of our nation. Matthew 16, 19 says, I'm going to go through a few scriptures and then we'll get into the meat. You shall have the secret authority. Matthew 16, 19 says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. God is saying, with the assignment of your stewardship, I'm giving you certain ingredients that is yours to use. Now, there's a difference between the ingredients you have and the ingredients you use. The, the challenge is half the church has no full understanding of what he has. The other half that knows what he has, has no full understanding of how to use it. And therefore, there's a lot of pain and crying in the midst of plenty. You're young. There's power in your youth. There's a future that is laid before you. You're 70% of the population of this nation. Having 70% of the population of a nation with understanding and power makes that country one of the greatest nations on the face of the earth. You might not know it, but in every place of power, 
for every conversation that is going on around the world right now. Nigeria is key. We might be acting foolish. We might be creating so many problems for ourselves. But there's such a basic fundamental statistics that make us key to the world. Most of the Western world, where people are jackpying to, has a decreasing working population. They're not raising children as often as they should. They can't replace workers, so they're running out of workers. It's part of why they're saying, come, come, yeah. It's taken from us for their benefit. Do we have enough wisdom to understand that? There's most of the growth of the world for the future is in the south of the world. The highest populations of the world going forward will be India, Nigeria, Indonesia, and nations like that. You are part of the strategy of the world. But do you know it? Do you even know your own value? Do you know why God made you a Nigerian for now? Why? Because the future of the world will depend on this part of the world. So if you are God's steward, what should you want to know? What is my part? What is my purpose in all of this? What is my assignment? Where is my actual location? Because for every assignment, there's a strategic location. It's the reason why sometimes everybody can move to the left. The Lord told Isaac, do not go. Do not follow the steps of your father before. Why? It was okay when your father moved because I ordered him to. That was the place at that point in time. So the solution of yesterday is like something my drivers do. You know, if we use Google Map to go to somewhere yesterday and it showed us a route and it saved us time. Tomorrow when you want to go there, they'll say, no, we should pass. That's where Google told us. I say, ah, ah. Oga. Google works per time, per second, is live. The route that worked yesterday, it doesn't mean it works today. You have to ask Google again. And five minutes into the route, Google can change his mind. Why? Because his live feed is responding to instantaneous the situation as it's presenting itself. Now, you have a live feed you have a life feed to Jehovah through the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, you will hear a voice telling you which way to go. To turn to the left or to turn to the right, that you may walk in it. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. When you're led, it's step by step. It's not the step of yesterday for tomorrow. No. What does that tell you? A steward is permanently attached to his source. A steward cannot detach from his source. Why? Because you will have gaps. You know sometimes when you want to use your Google map, if there's a lot of cloud and it's not receiving data, it will show you dot, 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 dot. It will be telling you the 15 minutes drive is one hour, 20 minutes or three hours or something. At that point, Google is sick. Because it's detached from its source. The moment it receives data, you will see it reroute, reorganize itself and give you correct information. That's you. When you're hooked to the master, you will be an effective, efficient, productive steward. Because the one who gave you the assignment or the resource or the instruction knows why. But the Bible also tells us that we receive in part which means the instruction of yesterday or this morning might not be sufficient for this afternoon. Because I only got a part of the instruction. And the Lord will continue to communicate as you move. So, it's not enough to come to church on Sunday if you're God's steward. It's a 24 7 agenda, personal between you and Him. It's not about the fact that you work in a department in church, which you should. It's about that you work in God's department 24-7. It's about the fact that you've learned, you have tuned your spirit to the Lord's spirit. 
is that you can receive guidance and instruction. It keeps you courageous. It keeps you able to fight. Even when it doesn't make sense, you're able to stand. The Bible says, they that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. When you know God and you know his voice, when everything around you doesn't make sense, you will still stand. You will fight when some people think you are stupid. But you know God is never stupid. Even though the Bible tells us that the wisdom of God is like what? Foolishness unto men. But when the wisdom of God seems like foolishness to others, you have a secret weapon. Why? Because it means that many do not know what it is that God is doing at that moment. That puts you at an advantage. Because by the time everything comes together, oh wow, your steps are ahead of the people. There will be a moment that they will think you're insane. I'm used to being insane. But being insane in Christ, happy to. You know, one of my insanity proved itself last night. Maybe some understand that, maybe some don't. <laughs> but you have to understand that when you're following God, you will fight for the right things, whether they're popular or not. Sometimes you pay a price for it, but you will stand. And you will stand knowing that it doesn't matter how long it takes. The Lord will show up and he will prove himself. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So when you, he will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. Use your mouth. Pray with ev concerning every situation where your assignment is concerned. <clears throat> Pray to ask for directions. There's always option A or option B. Ask the Lord, what is the Lord's option? It doesn't matter how wise the option seems. If it's not the Lord's option, you're wrong. No matter how smart it sounds, if it's not God's option, you're on the wrong side. And you do not want to be on the wrong side. You want to have the advantage. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I have given you authority to thread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. When you walk in the knowledge of his might, sometimes it might not be clear, but you will be okay. You will be okay because you know with clarity in your heart and there's a witness with your spirit that you're in the will of God. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel there is safety. So even when you're not sure, you can seek counsel with those that you trust. You trust their voice, you trust their spirituality, you trust their journey, you trust their values. You trust that theirs and yours align. But even then, all they give you is their opinion from their view. And all that information given to you then becomes your tool to use to make a decision bearing witness with the Holy Spirit. Which means at the end of the day, you still have the responsibility for knowing that that which you have chosen to do aligns with the purpose of God for your life. Because who can hear God for you like you? No one. That's why you cannot allow your life to be ruled by prophets. You have to know God for yourself and be able to bear witness. Now, when you're a steward... You have to have the audacity. Remember, you say the purpose audaciously as a believer. You have to have the audacity to pursue what the Lord instructs you to do, even when it doesn't make sense. Think about Joseph in the house of Potiphar. A sharp young man of this generation might think, What? Chase the woman. Eh, what's my own? She be, I'll be taken care of. I get a nice car. Madame will sort me out in the house. You'll be cool. In fact, she's the one that will protect you from the boss, so you probably never get fired. And the option was what? To go to jail. Does that look like a, an option to even consider? Some will not even. They'll just think, I don't have a choice. You know the I don't have a choice situation? There's never a situation where you do not have a choice. Don't ever kid yourself. 
There is never one situation that you do not have a choice. Sometimes you're going to have to choose God at a cost. Sometimes you must have the courage and the audacity to choose the pain of the moment. As long as it is the will of God in that situation, if you are standing on what is true and the world wants to punish you for it, it means God has a miracle hidden in it. And against wise counsel, you must have the courage to stand. Because if you're a steward for God, you exist because of him. The resources, the future you look forward to, everything is for his cause and for his benefit. And anytime you detach yourself, you become like Google Map that is detached from a satellite. And you will just be giving error messages. You can look like you are performing, but trust me, you are dysfunctional at that point. And in, in a dysfunctional format, you can end in destruction. So you need to understand that. In Isaiah 43, 2, the Bible says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through, God take time to put some of these painful scriptures. Why do we have to go through the fire? Why are we going through waters that can drown people? Because God knows that you come from a kingdom separate from the kingdom in which you dwell. And that there will be fight for territory. And in walking as a steward for God fighting for territory in a strange land, the ways of the land and the ways of your kingdom will conflict. And every time that there's a conflict, there will be battle. Who is battle afraid? Not us. Why? The Bible says we are what? More than conquerors. We will be victorious. Who is victorious except he is a victim and goes to battle? You are more than conquerors because you are going to have to conquer. But the Bible is saying more than what you need to conquer, you have. You might not feel like it. You might not see it, but you have it. When you get into it, you will see it manifest. But you must first accept the assignment. I'm a steward for the Lord. I serve a master. I serve a God who owns the universe. The one that rules in the affairs of men. The one that has the silver and the gold. And therefore, even for money, I will not lay down the values of my stewardship. Because we're confronted in this time and in this season by so much that seeks to put us in the error position because once it does, we're detached from source, we're dysfunctional and we cannot benefit from the resources of heaven that is made up. Because the Bible says the eyes of the Lord does not do what? It does not see sin. There are many things that are acceptable in the world now. But you need to always ask yourself, it might be acceptable in the world. Is it acceptable in his world? Because if you're part of his world, then ask yourself, is it acceptable in his world? And do I have the audacity to stand out rather than fit in? It's a fitting world right now. Half the people that are depressed or confused and have low self-esteem it's because you think you don't fit in in some areas. It's because you are comparing the genuineness and the originality of who God made you with the originality of another. You will always fall short. Why? Because they're not two you. Have you seen twins? They look alike, but they're not the same. In fact, I read something a few days ago. One woman had a set of twins. Believe it or not. The two have two different fathers. I'm telling you. 
two different fathers. When medically they tested and said she was confused, she said first they looked different, so she always wondered. By this time they were 10 months old. Oyibo. And then they decided to medically check. Apparently she slept with two different men around the same period and two eggs were fertilized differently. So she had a set of twins with two different fathers. You know, even if nobody knew before that you were doing... Those children have become permanent markers. May the Lord not mock us. No, because there's no way to hide it. Maybe she didn't tell one she was... Meanwhile, she had married one. Yes. So if the other one didn't know before that, oh, you were doing some things, the children became the evidence of the actions. So be careful. God is not mocked. He has a great sense of humor. No egg can fertilize without God's knowledge. They said it's one in a million chance that it can happen. But it does happen. I'm sure some people have those kind of children in their homes they don't know. Because they haven't done DNA. So they have no clue. That they are twins, but you know, as long as one was tested, the other was probably not tested. They assume that they're the same. Well, good luck, guys. <laughs> We're talking about having the audacity to pursue your assignment as a steward for God. Psalm 46 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. When you choose to walk with audacity and courage, you have to continuously lean on God. You have to continuously acknowledge that He's more than able and that He's true to every word that he has spoken to you and that even when you get to the crossroads in that walk of your courage that you must trust him because he is faithful that he will always show up no matter what what you see and you must become very aware of the knowledge of his might because why the might of God is your might as a child of God me I'm not afraid why do you think I can be fearless without courage. It's not because I don't have fears. It's because I know that whatever thing can try to create fear in me will bow at the feet of the Lord. And I have decided that since I belong to him and he dwells on the inside of me, it is the power of God that is made available to me. It is not my power. Coming to that understanding, accepting it and choosing to walk in it choosing to walk in it because there are moments that the reality of what you see will want to intimidate you then you speak to that intimidation and say ah but i know god but he's on my side but the bible says everything will work together for my good but i know that he's the god of truth and he's the god of justice and that the day of truth and justice will always come and that i know that he will never leave me nor forsake me never he said never means never he will never leave me nor forsake me that no matter what it is that I see God is bigger than every situation I will lean on him because he is my God and when the storm and the wind and the waters I will be still because I will cast my burdens on him because he is Jehovah so you have to learn to trust God if you want to walk audaciously and do great things in the world. Because it means you believe things. What is faith? Believing those things that are not as if they are. The things that you do have not materialized. But you must have the audacity to see it. And when you see it, you step out. You take the first, the second, the third step. When it still looks like there's still a million steps to get there. But except you take the first, the second, or the third step, you cannot see the manifestation of the hand of God. Because your first, second, third steps towards 
that which you believe is what draws the hand of God into it. Because you are believing God for what you cannot see. But you're saying, you, I know you can do this. I know that you have more than enough for this situation. I know that you are capable of turning this situation around. I know that this thing is not bigger than me. Though I walk through the fire, I will not be afraid. Though I walk through the waters, it will not consume me. It will not drown me. Though like the three Hebrew children, I can see this fire. But yet I know that I will not betray God and therefore I will not bow to your idol. And when they were willing to die, waiting for him, they didn't have to die. Just remember that. Sometimes it will look like you're about to die by choosing God. But when God knows that you will choose him, even at the point of death, in most times, you won't have to die. Why? Because he will show up and turn the situation around. Ephesians 6 10 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. The same power is at work in Jesus. 1 Corinthians 6 14, and God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. The God of the Bible, the one that made Jesus such a miracle of all times that is still manifesting today, is still the same God that we serve. He's your God and he's my God. And he's not a partial God, the Bible says. If we're joint heirs with Christ, you see, you, you have to know your right. You have to take your right. You have to imbibe your right. If I'm joint heirs with Christ, there's nothing I cannot do. That is the reality. If Christ said there's nothing that he will ask his father that he will not do for him. And he told me that, ask my father for anything in my name. You are the one that needs the audacity and the courage to do it. Because half the time we don't. Not because God has changed, but because we are too chicken to do it. We are too chicken to dream big enough. You see, dreaming big is not being foolish. Because when you dream big, wisdom says you will start where you are. You can dream big and move in stages. There's a place where the Lord is the one that will grant you the speed and the opportunity to lift you. But he will see your tenacity. He will see your diligence. He will see your dedication. But he will see that the vision is still set in your heart. And that's why the Bible says you should write the vision down upon the tablet. That it is for an appointed time. Don't it tarry. It will come. So maybe you live in a one-bedroom apartment with your entire family. So what? In fact, I remember yesterday, I was telling someone about one of my classmates when I was in secondary school. Smart girl and everything, but she had suffered a bit from all the war in the southeast and everything because she was an evil girl. So she was like maybe the oldest person in class. She was always very neat, very prim, very proper and all of that. And I think, I remember we had one assignment that we had to do. And the assignment required that you plant a bean seed in a pot or something. And the teacher said, okay, put it on the window of your bedroom. You know, assuming every child in the class had their own, one bed, their own bedroom, that they'll put it and all of that. And I don't know, I think she couldn't do the project or something. And then in class, when they were asking, she said, well, my family lives in a one-bedroom place and my mother would not let me me do that and of course cheeky Lagos girls you know decided that that was something to mock her about and they were like oh, your, your family lives in one room and those kind of silly calls you know and she, she was very angry but you know what is the best weapon for people who mock you success yeah in their mockery, they have decided that there's a place you cannot get to. That there are things you will not be able to do. Because of where you're coming from, because of your limitations, they can see now. That girl went on, became a medical doctor. I don't know where she is around the world right now. But I remember very well, 
just against the odds and she was smart so she stayed focused on her goals despite the mockery she focused on excelling at school and she did not only excel she was able to get into medical school and then became a doctor and she could have become anything else thereafter all I'm saying is look remember whose you are remember on whose assignment you're on remember that there's a world around you that has his own language but never lose yours and never lose the heart and the drive to pursue that which the Lord has called you to in Exodus 14 13 to 14 it says but Moses told the people don't be afraid just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today the Egyptians you see today will never be seen again the Lord himself will fight for you just stay calm why did I choose to go through a lot of scriptures because I want you to understand the basis of being audacious if your audacity is just a feeling or gra gra your gra gra will finish you will run into something that will drain your power but if the substance of it is Jehovah at the moment when you feel like you're almost drained you will go back to your source you will drink from the word of God which is why you cannot be an effective steward of the assignment of God on your life without being a man and a woman of God you cannot be that without being a man and a woman of the word you cannot be that without being a man and a woman of the presence of God you cannot be that without being linked to the Holy Spirit 24 7 why because every impossibility has a word problem every single impossibility has a word problem when you find the right word for it you will stand on it you will look at the enemy and say Whoa, timbo. you will face the enemy down and you will wait for the Lord it has a word problem and sometimes it has a patience problem you know how many times the Bible says wait go and count it because waiting is a fruit of trust if you trust the Lord you will wait for him it will look like it has to happen now God is not on your time he's on his time and the only time that will work for you is God's time because your time is always based with faulty assumptions but God's time is based on divine preparation so I have learned how to wait for the Lord I have learned how to stare the situation down and say ah ah she be a yini you'll have pain in your heart and you say but God I know you but God I trust you but God you are bigger than this situation and your word says find the word eat the word rest in the word then build a support system what is your support system your community the church you go to the kind of word you receive every day your tribe your influencers the one that when you really feel weak who do you open your mouth to draw to try and draw strength from do you vet them before the moment of trial do you know what it is to audit your circle of influence you must audit them you must audit, audit them for their spirituality you must audit them for their truthfulness to Christ because there are many that appear Christianity. There are many lookers in the church. But you need to find those that don't just look like it, but are it in the word and in substance. The ones that know when they need to be praying for you rather than mocking you. The ones that when you're so weak and you can't stand, will hold your hand and be your errands and your oars. And the scriptures you can't remember at that moment they will remind you of them and even with that will come a dose of just everyday wisdom 
that will speak to the situation. Trust in him. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us. Ephesians 3.20 You know, every scripture I have my version. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ever think, dream, imagine, plan. I, have, I always fill it with words. According to his power that dwells on the inside of me, which means the power that God needs for the miracles that I want, I am the carrier of it. So I'm not looking for it. I carry it according to his power that dwells on the inside of me. I already carry the power. How do I ignite and activate it? It's in the place of prayer. It's in the place of worship. It's in the place of my obedience. It's in the place of my submission to the word of God. It's in when I war. And I say, ah, oh, Father. And he say, you look at your child and you say, God of the heavens. You gave me this child. I did not come asking. You gave me a child. Because you, are, you rule in the affairs of his life. And you said, I am the children you have given to me. We are for what? Signs and wonders. So how am I going to have to sweat? Over what? No, 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 no. I give back to you your gift. Do what you alone can do is inside of you work it if you have diesel in your house and your generator is empty and you are sitting in darkness you're a foolish person the power you need is in you use it when every situation stares you in the face stare back stare back with the word fight you cannot be a steward for God if you're not a fighter for the things of God. You must be willing to die defending your assignment. When anything challenges that place where the Lord has called you to. But you must first understand what it is. So spend time with God. Have a sense, a sense of what your actual assignment is. And don't get caught in all this purpose. I don't know my purpose. I don't know. Do whatever it is that God gets you to do today. That's purpose. Do it today. Do the purpose of tomorrow. Do the purpose of the day after. At one point, all the purposes will come together. You will have greater clarity about what all the small, 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 small purpose was tending towards. The Bible already says the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. So if the Lord is ordering your step to today, that's the purpose of God for today. If he orders your step to tomorrow, that is the purpose of what you are doing in each day. Does it serve God? Does it honor God? Does it align with the word of God? Everything will come together. Because what is my purpose? Oh, how many lives have I lived in one life? But I'm very clear that I'm living the life of God for me. It took from wanting to be this, wanting, I'm sure I've told you those stories before, wanting to be this, wanting to be that, wanting to be this, and then, okay, starting the company, building the companies, and all of that, but in the middle of that, doing all these other things around, till I got to a point around my 40s, when it became clear that my real talent is a strategic mind and a gift of the tongue. And what does a strategic mind do? It can operate in any space. And therefore, I removed every limitation. So, oh, but are you still in this business? The business is there. The business is doing itself. Me, I'm doing the business of me, what God has called me to do. And I will walk into each space confidently, assured that I'm in the will of God. And that's what gives me the courage and the audacity to fight back. They that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. 
I have come to know that God is not a wicked God. The Bible tells me that it delights in what? In the prosperity of his people. If he's not a wicked God, he cannot set my feet upon this rock and then kick the rock from under my feet so I can fall down. Whose God is that one here? It's not mine, for sure. Now, so if we clearly know that it is not him, and I know that I lived yesterday as the Lord ordered my steps, and as I'm living today, as he has ordered my steps. When I get to tomorrow and something is staring me in the face, I will stare back. Why? Because I know I am walking in the will of God. So anything that wants to fight against it, I will fight back. Why? Because there's a power on the inside of me that the Lord will walk on to use as I fire in my spiritual anger to use to war. And he will make everything work together for me. He will raise men from left, from right, from center. Oh, it might be sometimes a long journey, sometimes a medium-term journey. But God will show up. And I will know that there are moments I will lose some battles on my way to winning the war. There's a difference between the battle and the war. You must never confuse them. Because when you don't have enough wisdom to understand, you will kill yourself fighting a battle. Not knowing that sometimes tact requires that you lose some battles in order to win the war. Hey, Father, I worship you. Be assured always that God is with you. 1 John 4, 4 to 6. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No matter what you're going through. I know so many of you, it's so easy to lose heart with Nigeria. But you know, God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. Every land that has troubles is a land of opportunity. That's the truth. Every trouble in the land in itself is an opportunity. The question is, which one of them are you called to? Which one will you discern is yours to turn into your blessing? And if God made us Nigerians, there's a reason. All I want to know is why. What is my reason for being here? And how do I add value to it and take value for the kingdom? Because at the end of the day, it's a kingdom task. That's all we're going to account for. When we get to heaven, one woman and her God, one man and her God, the entirety of the Bible is the reconciliation of men unto the Father. Christ died just for that. So whatever your place of assignment is, if you cannot tie it back to the salvation of souls for God and the purpose of God, something is wrong. There's a disconnect. Just know that. You want to be rich? Good. Do you think God cares about the money? The silver and the gold there is. The cattle and a thousand is there is. God has never lost a dime before. Every man you call rich in the world died and left it behind. Have you seen God lose anything? Collect all the diamonds you like, you will leave it behind. If you are not careful and you haven't trained your children, they will sell it for peanuts to another. When the Bible tells you about inheriting the wealth of the Gentiles, how do you think it will happen? Transfer of wealth for cheap. It's all about positioning. So God doesn't, he's not bothered about the money. If the wealth and the riches are needed for your own call, you will have it. You can be sure of that. But if you are seeking that which will destroy your own call, the Lord will keep you from it because he's more vested in you fulfilling his agenda and getting to heaven. So let's not get confused about what the real assignment is. In walking with God, Amos 3, 7, Truly the Lord God will do nothing he has mentioned without revealing his purpose to his servants, the prophets. Which means in God's journey with you, he will always reveal the agenda. Which is why you must be connected to him. You cannot have error. You cannot be disconnected. Because then you will make wrong decisions. Because you'll have wrong information. 
Matthew 6, 31, 34. Therefore, do not worry. Say, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Material things and the worries we have make us sometimes give up. We lose our courage and audacity for God. And we accept lesser situations because we settle because of our flesh. I'm hungry. I need a roof over my head. God will understand. Don't kid yourself. God will never understand anything against his word. We need to work it out. We need to work with him. We need to seek to achieve the purpose of God. He will show you things and manifest mysteries. In Joel 2, 28, says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Gifts to bless the body, to make it easier for you. So seek the gifts of the spirit. Because they will help you in your journey to be audacious. But there are certain warnings for servants, for stewards. Corinthians 4.2 Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. She must decide intentionally to be faithful to God. You will not have two children with two fathers from one to incest. You understand that? A little to the left and a little to the right doesn't work with God. First Peter 4.10 As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. As good stewards of God, varied grace, manifold grace of God. Your gift is not to rule over others. It's to bless people. I came here this morning. I hope to be a blessing. I had to be at a high-powered function. I went there for 15 minutes. And I said, I'm coming. I have it, an assignment. It's true. If you go to Civic Center now, there's every governor, first lady, and everything at the 60th birthday of someone who is precious to me. She's my friend. We've been friends since school. She was the first lady of Ekiti, an, an accomplished woman in her own right, busy at the lair FIME. And I knew that I had to show up for her. So I went there and said, I'm coming. I have an assignment. Why? The gift of God in my life is tagged. It is tagged for a purpose. And investing in the next generation for me is an assignment. And therefore, even on the greatest days, if there are conflicts, I know the choices to make. What? So, as stewards of the gift of God in your life, you are going to have moments of conflict. You're going to have to make choices. You have, must never forget in whose army you serve and who called you out. Your gifts and the grace that comes with it is for the purpose of the kingdom without which you can have a gift that is useless even to you because if your gift isn't serving God you will not benefit from it yes if your gift isn't serving God you will not benefit from it because it's as you walk with God that the grace that multiplies it manifests So you want to be pastor? Good. Is it so people can go after you, carry your bag, carry your shoe, carry your leg? After a while, you become a useless human being. No, it's true. Because we get carried away with all the extras. Meanwhile, the extras themselves are dangerous. Yes. So you have to deliberately put yourself under so that you can stay focused. When I do the things that people consider the greatest things in my life, I don't like to read the follow-up messages or the feedbacks. Why? Because your head can get you into trouble. That's true. 
You have to be intentional. I'm a servant of God. I do not serve myself. The gift of God in my life is for God's purpose. I will never make it a product. I want you to know God has an army. You're enlisted in it. But you know, there's dishonorable discharge and honorable discharge in the army all of the time. Yeah. There are many that are called, but the Bible says few are chosen. You make yourself to be chosen. Not because you are not called. Because if you are here, you are already called. But how do you become chosen? By your diligence and dedication to the assignment. By your unrelenting, unwavering commitment to the call. By never giving up on God for something else. By making the sacrifices when you need to. I don't want to preach you up here and come into the church, everything works rosy. No, you have to read your Bible. Because there's nowhere in the Bible it says that. And the problem is we're making promises that God hasn't made. Not because it's impossible for God to make that, but that's not how we were made. That's not what we were made for. You do not join an army to go and sleep. If you join the Lord's army, you join for warfare. If you join the Lord's army, you want a battle. The only thing you know and you have is that when you're in the Lord's army, you're victorious before you started. Why? Because you are more than conquerors. And God cannot be defeated. Think, as naughty as the Israelites were, as badly behaved as they were, because of covenant, God always went back to find a way of escape for them. That's you. So you cannot lose if you're hooked up to God, but you can sign yourself into destruction by your choices. Let's not forget that the people that the ground opened and swallowed were who? They were Jews. Who? Is it Akan or whatever his name is? And his people. You can use your own hands. The, uh, the flip side of it is you can be the fearless, most audacious steward of God's assignment and rule and shake the world and die serving God. God does not respect age. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do with your heart and your readiness for the call. So how many stewards of the Lord are in the house? Lift up your hands to the heavens. Nemo shantabo kuria. Kahina masantabo kuru makasin. Nemo soto robo kahini maria kasantabo kuria. Lift up your hands to the heavens. Ne shanta kahuru mai ni kasunturu. Ne iraba karaba kasantabo kuria kahini maria. Nemo soto robo kahini maria kasanda. Ne maria ka. Nemo soto roba kahini. Nemo shanta kahuma kahini mari. Nemo soto riba kahini. Nemo soto. Nemo ri kasin. Nemo soto roba kahini. Nemo soto. Nemo ri akasun. Take the stage, Lord. Ask the Lord to take the stage of your life. Have your way. I just want to be a vessel. Nothing more. Ne ma shinti ko huria. Ne rapa kari ko suturu buka yini Maria ka yini. Ne mo sotoro baka. Please take. Ne mo sotoro. Ne mo to see you glorified. So take the stage. 
You keep telling God, take the stage of my life. Have your way in my life. I just want to be a vessel to serve you. A vessel to worship you. A vessel to honor you. A vessel across the world serving you. Taking your message to everyone. Peace and the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Lord, I just want you to be glorified in my life. Lord, when Take your stage of my life. Yeah, but shut Lord, up I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. I'm just a No, nothing more. Just, just to see, see you glorified. Our Father and our Lord, here we are. Lifting holy hands to you, Lord. Acknowledging that you are Jehovah, the Almighty, the man of war. Our beginning and our end. The one that was, that is, and that will forever be. Allah bada ino eleri okon lana okon loni okon titi aye ha le wi le se ha le se le wi olorun ojo gogo bani bani lowo iku bani bani lowo ise oran ni ise bani ise ne maria oran mo ni ise fire ti ise nta ba kari ka suntu ka ina na ka sunta ba ka raba ka yini maria ka su ne mo robo ka shinti we present ourselves before you, Lord. Every man, every woman, every child in this house. And we receive the grace for the assignment. We receive the courage for the assignment. We receive the voice for the assignment. Now, we lay aside every weight, everything that easily besets us. Every weight that before now stood in the way, every hindrance, we receive grace, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your children. I have done my bit, Lord, to yours. Nehemari, touch them. Every single one of them, Father, touch them. Renew your hand upon their lives, Lord. Let your spirit fall upon your children. Wake every person in slumber, wake them up from their slumber. Let the fire burn on the inside of each and every one of your children. Set them free, Lord. Ni Maria Casanda Cohuria Niki Sinkaruma Carapa Casanda Cohuria to occupy every space you have assigned them to, not just to occupy, but to overtake, to legislate, to control, to determine, and to build for you according to your pattern and your word. Thank you for the man and the woman of this house. Thank you for the father of the house. Thank you, Lord, for being their strength and their shield. Thank you. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed.